Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you... Da, 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 the new streaming setup. So, as some of you might have seen, uh, I've started streaming again. And for one very good reason. So, if I go down here... You might see this little cable labeled, oh, I don't know, NBN. For those of you who don't know, this magical slot here is Australia's first fiber network, which is very exciting. It's um, an initiative to bring good internet to Australia as opposed to the koala internet that you've all experienced. And fortunately, my girlfriend's house was eligible, so we applied for it and got it uh, two weeks ago. That's the modem, as you can see, very, very healthy got its lights on and that was enough to get me up and running to stream again so the last couple of weeks I've been working on this little gig um, it's not much as you can see it's pretty straightforward but it's comfy enough for doing regular streams and what I'm gonna try and do on this channel from now on is just maybe occasionally you know every second or third day doing a two-hour stream um, probably around 8 to 10 Australian Eastern time so that's, I don't know what it is in PST or whatever, but yeah, I'll send out notifications via Twitter. Anyway, this is not the, the stream set up fully set up. I need to do a few things. Namely, I've got to set up the controller, the microphone, the webcam, the little tray there, and you'll see why, and this tripod here. So what I'll do, I'll spend the next uh, two or three minutes setting that up, and I'll show you what it looks like. See you in a bit. Alrighty, finally have everything up and running, and that took a lot longer than two to three minutes. Um, so now that I've got everything set up, let's run through the specifics. Uh, a lot of people ask about the TV I'm playing on. I'll try and get the model number in the video. I don't know if it's going to show or not. Ugh. All right, it's somewhere there. Um, long story short, it's a 2011 model Samsung 40 inch, uh, running game mode. It took me forever to find game mode, but is running game mode. It's um, okay. Not great. Not bad. Just okay. It's sort of middle ground. Obviously, you know, I prefer CRTs, but uh, given the amount of space I have, have fun getting a CRT into there. <laughs> so, you know, you got to make do with what you got. I actually went out and purchased these two cabinets. So what the TV is standing on is a Kmart purchase for about $30. Same with this small table, $20 Kmart purchase. God, I love Kmart in Australia. You can get stuff so cheap. Um, the computer is my old tower. This is what I used to use with my CRT. A little bit dusty, I'll get some of that dust off there. Um, it's running, pff, I don't even know what, you'd have to ask Gokun, because Gokun actually made this PC for me years ago. It is running a solid state drive that I updated, and a graphics card that, once again, Gokun gave me, so uh, just ask him. Um, it's running the DVI to HDMI because there's no HDMI ports on it, and that just runs into the back of the TV, as we can see. While we're back here, we can see that I'm running external speakers. I don't like using the TV sound. It's not as nice as these speakers. And the neat thing about these is it doesn't matter which way they're facing. Um, they can actually be faced any way and they'll put out the same sound. They're Logitech 360 degree speakers. So I've actually tested this. No matter if I'm facing it like that way or that way, It'll still put out the same sound, which is fascinating, but also really good because it means I can tuck them behind there and I still get the same sound quality out. Um, the controller itself, you guys have seen this. I was supposed to do a review of this thing, but I never got around to it because I'm incredibly lazy. This is the Konami Premium Controller. Let me I get a nice aerial view of that thing there. Uh, really nice controller. I really should have done a review on this. I forked out a lot of money for this thing initially and I was like, oh, it was not worth the purchase. But in hindsight, if you get one now for, I don't know, like 300-ish dollars, I reckon it's actually a pretty sound investment. It's not light. It's made out of um, aluminium, as you can see there. Uh, but overall, it feels really nice, especially this turntable. I don't know if you can see it, but the grip on the top of this turntable feels fantastic. Everyone that's played on it absolutely loves it. Uh, as for the keys, I did change out the original KPC keys. These are the old gen Sunwas, as you can see if I get a bit closer. Through the uh, the smoky color black keys there. You can see how dirty the controller is too. Um, I just prefer the old gen Sunwa key over what they had in there. And obviously I didn't want to shell out for new Sunwas because I prefer the older feel. I mean, it's got that vintage classic feel. And I feel like it fits the controller better. I mean, if you look at the sort of grayish 
style of the controller and those keys. They look nice in there. So I swapped those out. As for what's actually in the keys, I'm running 50 gram switches, the standard. I love 50 gram. Wouldn't recommend any other switch. And 100 gram springs. And these are very worn 100 gram springs. Um, they were the original ones that were in the cabinet when I got it. So they've been beaten to hell, like literally beaten to hell over decades. So they're very worn hundreds. Um, you've probably heard the sound on stream, but you cannot replicate that beautiful snap of the old gen key. And that's why I still run them today. Ooh, the sticker's coming off too. All right, as for the camera, I'm actually using a PS3 iMove camera. This is recommended by, uh, I don't know what is going by now, Toast Chan, or maybe it was someone else, but I was on Discord and people were like, oh, you can get a really cheap 60 FPS if you just buy one of these. So I got one for $20, $30 and completely agree. It's a fantastic investment if you're looking for like a hand cam because you're not going to make a huge, huge layout like, you know, 1080p. You only need something small. So I've been running that. As you can see, it wouldn't be a dark setup without some ghetto to it. So it's been attached by rubber bands to a tripod. And I think for the setup, everything else takes like 10 seconds to set up. This is the thing that takes the longest because of that freaking organization. Like to get it centered properly in the layout for OBS takes you forever. And I sit there going, why isn't it showing up properly? Why isn't it showing up properly? And then you realize after a while that it's because, you know, you just haven't tilted it the right way. Obviously I adjust it only with those two. The legs just stay the way they are. Takes about three, four minutes to get that angled properly. So that is the majority of the setup right there, just getting that tripod set up, which is really frustrating. Um, as I've shown, I'm using OBS to capture everything. Uh, I'm outputting, I don't know, I think it's like three and a half thousand bits at the moment, because thankfully my new internet can cope with that. Uh, haven't used this layout yet. Uh, you guys will see this one very soon, hopefully, the next time I stream. Um, I've put all the information there that I've just covered on the controller. Uh, as well as my logo and the chat is now visible on the side there. Um, two audio outputs, obviously I've got the microphone, I'm using the Blue Yeti microphone as we can see here, and uh, obviously the desktop audio. That's what I've got it set to at the moment. I'm still tinkering with it because I'm not sure what the right audio balance is, but given the last couple of updates, mainly this tray here, we should see a difference. Uh, one issue I was having was that the key taps were way too loud and you could not hear a single word I was saying. So the way that I tried to get through that issue is by sticking the controller away, uh, sorry, not the controller, the microphone away from the controller and closer to my mouth, hence why it's on this tray that is uh, sticking up. And that way it sort of takes the sound away from the key taps, which are very loud because I hit really bloody hard and uh, closer to my mouth so you can actually hear what's going on. As for the chat itself, I normally have my phone sitting here and I'm not actually the one that reads the chat. I've actually got my chat reader out here cooking dinner for me. Hello. <laughs> Hello. So there's my chat reader over there. She's just preparing a lovely dinner for me. Um, I won't leave the camera on her too long. She's a little bit camera shy. So I'll go back to the setup. Um, as you can see, it's not in my usual location. It's not in the garage or anything. This is uh, my girlfriend's house in Nunawadding. Um, really important thing. This fan behind the webcam, this is a Dyson fan. Uh, this belongs to my girlfriend. Best thing about this setup, holy crap. 2DX is really, really physically demanding. I forgot how demanding it was after not playing for half a year. So this thing has saved my bacon more than enough times. Anyway, so that's the general setup at the moment. Uh, I'm still tweaking with it. As you can see, it's not perfect, but it is what it is. It's easy enough to play on and if you guys have any suggestions on how to improve this thing I'll get a better angle I'll just switch over the bed Ugh. if you guys can think of any way to improve this thing uh, please let me know because as you can see it's it's very primitive still uh, I'm up for suggestions and of course I want to bring quality content to my channel which people have been asking for for a long time so thanks for checking out this video um, hopefully this has given some insight into what I'm up to what I'm trying to do. Once again, streams will be every two or three days around 8 to 10 Australian Eastern Standard Time. Tune in, hang out with me, have a good time. 
But yeah, I might actually start a stream right now. It's about time. So looking forward to chatting to you guys then. Have a good one. Bye-bye for now.